and thank you for tuning in today. I first want to say that it is an honor, a great honor, to be teaching this virtual session of General Conference. I realize that there are some youth pastors and youth workers and maybe even young people tuning into this and I want to say that it's just uh, an honor to speak to some of the most amazing people in the world. I thank God for the UPCI and uh, I give special honor to the UPCI Youth Ministries leadership, Brother Carson, Brother Ranking, Brother Thomas. It, uh, I'm so thankful for these wonderful men of God and um, I appreciate them and their, their walk with God and uh, who they are. I have been asked to teach this session today on a soul winning youth ministry. Before I teach that, before I teach, I would, I would, uh, I would like it if, if we could pray together. And so if you wouldn't mind, if you could close your eyes and turn everything, turn every, all other distractions off and, and let's close our eyes and lift our hands together. Lord, I love you and I thank you God for these amazing people. I pray God today that your anointing in your presence, Lord, would, would be with us, Lord. God, I pray that you would give us wisdom and instruction, God, that you, Lord, would do what we cannot do. Help us today. Help us in this day, in this hour, to be the salt and light of a dark world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. A soul winning youth ministry. A soul winning youth ministry. I would like to begin with a story about a place called Easter Island. Easter Island was um, situated about 500 miles west off the coast of South America. In its day, it was known to be an absolute paradise. The island was full of giant palm trees that provided food and shelter. Those, that island also was very rich in wildlife that lived there and, and natural springs of water that, that were pocketed all throughout that island. Easter Island was a paradise. There was a group of people known as the Rapa Nui, I'm glad I'm not known as the Rapa Nui. Uh, known as the Rapa Nui, and they settled there on Easter Island. And the story is told that one tribe turned to two, and two turned to four, and four to eight. And before it was all said and done, there were tribes scattered all throughout Easter Island. And because food, water, and shelter was so easily accessible to these people, they turned their attention onto something that really seems kind of silly. But they turned their attention to carving stone statues. They would, they would carve these massive, sometimes 15 to 20 foot tall statues out of stone, and they would place them in various places on the island. And the story is told that, that one tribe began this and another tribe saw that what this tribe had done. And they, and they tried to carve a bigger and better statue. And, and before, before it was all said and done, the, the whole island broke out and carving these statues bigger and better, and some with hats, some 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 without hats, some with full bodies, some just faces. And they started to carve these statues at a rapid rate. What they did not realize, however, on Easter Island was that they were using their natural, their precious natural resources at a very alarming rate. The trees that provided shelter and food were now being chopped down to transport these statues across the island. Also, the trees that, that provided shelter 
uh, that provided shelter for the wildlife that was there. Because the trees were gone, the wildlife became more exposed and became easier to hunt. And so now the trees are, are being chopped down. The wildlife is being hunted away. And, and all of this was happening so fast. They did not even realize that the island, the paradise that they knew was crumbling underneath of their feet. It got so bad on Easter Island. It got so competitive on Easter Island that wars actually began to break out one tribe against the other all over some statues, all over some carvings that really, when you think about it, didn't matter at all. And the reason I'm bringing up that story in this session, in this session with, which is a soul winning youth ministry, how to, how to have a soul winning youth ministry. The reason I bring that story to your attention is because just like the Rapa Nui, just like the people that settled in Easter Island, it is possible to become focused on things that do not matter, even in the church. And so I ask you during this session today, are you focused on the right things? Youth pastor, youth worker, student? Is there some of your attention? Has your attention been taken away from the things that really matter in the kingdom of God or the paradise that you're living in? Has your attention been stolen by menial tasks and busy work and church events and fundraisers and calendars and schedules? Has the main thing become a side thing? It is very easy, hear me, it is very easy to take the most precious thing and make it something that is just a something we bypass and look over something we walk across every day not realizing what we have is being wasted i know what it's like i've been in this long enough been in ministry long enough to know that it is easy to get caught up in church calendars and busy work I know what it's like when we can become so focused on things that do not really matter to where we can plan an event for one month, but we cannot spend one hour teaching somebody a Bible study about Jesus. My pastor said it this way, that we can become so event driven that we can drive a thousand miles to a conference but we can't walk a hundred feet to a neighbor to share with them the gospel. What I'm saying to you in this session is that we must get back to the things that really matter. Jesus is coming quickly. And there are people in this world that need the gospel. They're hurting, they're depressed, they're lonely and they are looking for something that you and I have. And we must, as youth pastors, youth workers and young people, we must turn our attention again onto doing the will of him that has sent us. God is calling you to do a great and mighty work for him we have to do what matters in this day and hour and what matters in the kingdom of God is reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ how do we do it how how do we reach people with the gospel just like they did in Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 Peter preaches an amazing message 3,000 is added to the church and, 
After this initial stage, you will see in the latter verses 42 through 47, you will see a plan laid out for the church. The Bible says in 2 and 42 that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking bread and in prayers. Verse 46, if you go down, it says, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Notice, notice that, that after the initial influx of people of the church, that, that they didn't just stay in the temple, that they were in the temple and they were house to house. We have to be balanced in youth ministry. We have to be balanced as churches to be people who are in the temple, but also house to house. I believe we can get out of balance with that, that we can become so, that we can become so focused on church that we don't share the gospel with anybody. The scripture says, praise God in his sanctuary. And it also says, praise God in the firmament of his power. Praise God in the building, praise God out of the building. And the gospel ought to be preached in the building, but the gospel also better get out of the four walls of your church. Amen. We've got to get the gospel out of the building. The way they did this is a few ways. We find it in verse 42. They indoctrinated, amen, these people. When they won them, they indoctrinated them. They taught them how to teach. Here at the Anchor Church, in this youth group, in this church body as a whole. We do not teach people anymore just so that they can know. We have changed our focus to teach people, young people, old people, whoever. We have, we have changed our focus to teach people so that they can also teach. We do not teach Bible studies here for knowledge anymore. We teach people to equip them to go and teach others. Teach people. You want to have a soul winning, soul winning youth ministry? Teach your young people how to teach. Teach them how to teach a Bible study. Bring them along with you to a Bible study that you are teaching. They will do what you are doing. If you are not teaching a Bible study, they're probably not going to teach a Bible study. If you are not burdened and, 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 and you, are not, you don't have a heart for people around you, guess what? They're probably not going to have a heart for the people. But if you, youth pastor, if you, youth worker, can get a burden and a desire to see the lost reached, amen, they also will feel and catch on to that burden. Amen. Share stories. You share stories of what it's like to reach people. I, I was able to share a story with, with young people recently. I, about, about a month ago, I was praying in a, in a park here locally in Zanesville. Uh, every now and again in the mornings, I go to a place called Putnam Hill Park and has this big overlook of the city you can see for miles. And, and I park my car there and I watch the sunrise and pray and I was praying that day, and as I was leaving, there was this lady under, the gaze under a gazebo that was there, and, and uh, I just felt a nudge to, to, to go to her, and so, and so I did. I, I, I stopped the car, and, and, uh, and I rolled the window down. I didn't want to get out of the car. I didn't want it to be uncomfortable, and uh, I, I rolled the window down, and I said, ma'am, I don't know who you are. But I just feel to tell you that God loves you and he knows where you're at. That's it. Instantly, this lady starts crying. She starts weeping. And I was able to lead her in repentance and pray with her. And uh, just believing, still believing that, that somehow God is, is, is going to save her. But I, but I was able to share with my young people, with, with the students that... That, that, that are here. I was able to share my heart with them for, for this lady, this random lady that, that I had, had met at the park that day. 
And I am, what am I doing? I am teaching them. I am, I am imparting to them the burden that God has put in me. When God calls you to a youth ministry, he calls you to that whole youth ministry. But he will also allow you to focus on key young people in that youth group. If I have learned anything, I have learned that Jesus had 12 disciples, but he also had three that was closer to him than any other, Peter, James, and John. He loved all of his disciples, and we love all of our young people. But you have to be sensitive enough to know that God's hand is on certain young people in your youth group. I was, I was youth pastoring in Dayton, Ohio, and, and uh, amazing young people, a youth group of 15 or 20, but God put four young people specifically in my spirit to, to pour into them on a weekly basis. And, and, uh, and so I did. I, I taught and I loved on and I, I, I poured into these, the youth group as a whole, but I would take these young men out to eat and, and, and share with them my heart and share with them my burden. And, and uh, I, I, would, I, I would pull them aside and, and pour into them, just like Jesus did with, with his disciples. And, and, uh, and, and I can't say that I did everything right, but, but I tried to do it the Bible way, the, the, the way that Jesus did it, because the Bible way always works. And today I, I'm no longer in Dayton, Ohio, but those four young men that, that were there at that time, three of them are now youth pastors. One of them is, is, is a youth president of the Ohio District ALJC. Another one is an amazing saint of God. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because God, God wants you to teach what you have been taught, to pour into them. And now those four young men are reaching people all around them with the gospel. Indoctrinate, indoctrinate, teach them how to teach. Amen. And the gospel will go further with 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 those few than it, than it could ever go with just you. Indoctrinate them and pour into them. Number two, you've got to have fellowship and breaking of bread. You, we've got to have a move of God, but we also have to be balanced in youth ministry and have fun, amen, and have just have cut up and have a good time together. We have to be able to be balanced, amen. And youth ministry. So they were, they had fellowship and they broke bread together. The reason young people, a survey said that a reason young people stay in church is because they found a friend in church. And so link them up together. Let them fellowship together. The third way you're going to see revival and soul winning break out in your youth group is through prayer. In Acts chapter 2, they prayed. They were people of prayer. And when you get your youth group praying, you will see things happen. Just a few Sundays ago, on a Sunday night, we had a prayer meeting down here in the youth chapel. We were socially distant. We were being wise, but we had a prayer meeting down here in this youth chapel. And a young person came up. I had a young person come up to lead us in prayer, and they began to pray for a specific young man. And our youth group went to prayer for that young man. And the next Sunday, he was in church with us on Sunday morning. That's no accident. It's because of prayer. Get your youth group praying. And number four, get your youth group, get your young people teaching Bible studies. We have young ladies and, and young people right now who are teaching friends. They're teaching virtually. They are having people over to their house and they are, they are teaching the gospel. Now they have caught the burden They've caught the vision. They've caught all of that. And now they're taking what they have and they're sharing the gospel. They, they feel like it's attainable. They feel like it's possible. And now they're sharing the gospel. They're going house to house. I want to tell you right now, it is possible to have revival in your youth group. It is possible, amen, to have uh, amazing things happen in your church. But you have to be intentional about teaching them to teach. You have to be intentional about fellowship and breaking bread. And you have to be intentional about prayer. Amen. 
Be intentional about those things and see what God will do. I want to pray for you right now. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for wisdom. I thank you, oh Lord, for these, for these youth pastors and workers and young people that are watching today. I pray, oh God, that a burden would come over them for their city. A burden would come over them, oh God, for the things that really matter. God, for the souls, oh God, that are around them. God, in, in neighborhoods and places around the church, I pray, God, for a burden to come upon them. In Jesus' name, let us be, let them be the salt and the light, oh God. You have given them every tool that they need to be a light to a lost and dying world. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you today.